another rendition of truth be told now this week or this past coming week we've just seen more and more ridiculous crap uh you know trump let go of his uh, uh mugshot we've got uh you know all the memes with it that came with it and everybody's talking about it yada 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 you know everyone knows it's a show and it's a big joke and it's going to come back to bite the Democrats' ass. So, there's that. Um, did see Sleepy Joe falling asleep at the Maui meeting or Hawaii meeting or whatever. Um, it's kind of funny that, you know, he wanted to only give them $700 a piece instead of actually fixing up the town and then send billions to Ukraine. That's just insane. Insane. Can't even take care of Americans. Ridiculous. But anyways, you'll see tons of that, you know, in the news and YouTube about all that crap. So, let's get on to talk about what I really want to talk about this week. Uh, I would go on a spew about the whole Disney Star Wars Ahsoka uh, series, but I don't need to. Everybody's probably seen, th I know I have. I've seen hundreds of videos on YouTube where people are talking about and how horribly bad the show is. Uh, you can go check out their stuff. It's, it's, it's a really terrible show. You got one guy, I think it's Ray, his name's Ray Stevenson or whatever. And he, he's like uh, one or two guys that's on the show. The rest of them are all, it's all women. It's all female. Uh, two, uh, Dave Filoni is a wannabe Lucas. And he's having a wet dream because he finally gets to take his cartoon characters and make a live adaption, which is just dumb. It's all, it's feminist propaganda crap everybody's sick and tired of it nobody wants feminism anymore uh you watch a lot of these podcasts for dating podcasts and stuff like that and uh, the vast majority of the women on these that talk about dating uh and youtubers i mean the women they're just they're sick of feminism uh they absolutely cannot stand feminism. So, feminism is getting cracked down on. Like, people are done with it. Uh, it's slowly being pushed away. Uh, soon there won't be any more feminism. Thank God. Uh, it's a joke. But anyways, Ahsoka is a horrible, horrible TV show. Don't bother watching it. Uh, it's not good. That's all I'm going to say about it. If you want to see the details on it, you can go watch another uh, a different YouTube channel because they all are talking about it. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about is I did just get done watching the new Blue Beetle movie for DC. I, first of all, we already know the director is an idiot and he is very racist uh, very woke so naturally you were going to get a bad movie anyway and it is bad it's really cringe uh, George Lopez is not funny he never has been in my eyes maybe somebody else thinks he's funny I, I definitely don't and he is super racist he's literally came out and said it that he is racist, big time. Um, 
Now, I, I don't know all the backstory of the Blue Beetle. Like, I never read the comics or anything like that. He was just a character that you knew of because of the Justice League. But you really didn't... Unless you were a hardcore DC Blue Beetle fan, you really didn't know much other than his name. Um, supposedly... Uh, there was a guy named Dan Garrett, the original Blue Beetle, which was like in the 40s to the 60s. Um, he was like some college professor. Uh, he originally was a, like a pharmacist or, you know, he did pharmaceuticals. Anyway, he's a scientist and he created this uh, super vitamin or something. Uh, that when he taken for a limited time he'd give him like super strength to make him super smart super fast you know a couple of things and that was it later on uh, it's, I, I guess they changed the story when it changed comics to Fox Comics I can't remember who what it said the original comic brand was that started Blue Beetle but the character changed to Fox Comics and Fox Comics kind of changed his background story now he finds this blue scarab and it gives him certain magical abilities uh, like he found in India like in a he did some archaeology work as well and he found it in India and it gave him some uh, some powers uh, again like super strength made him super smart super fast and that was about it um the, he is mentioned in the movie when they're talking about the blue beetle in the underground lair um, but he supposedly he dies this is when DC took over for the uh, and bought the character from Fox Comics they changed and revamped his story again now, in this, this Blue Beetle, his name is Ted Cord, and he has no superpowers. Uh, he can't use the scare. But, of course, like most of the superheroes they do, he's a multi-billionaire, you know, and he's an inventor, so he starts making all this uh, tech and gadgetry. Uh, based off the Blue Scare, which he has from Dan Garrett. Um, so he, that's what he, he had, you know, he had all that kind of crap like Batman. He had his own vehicles and shit like that too. Anyways, um, and then the modern version, the, the one that came in the 2000s or whatever, I don't, actually, I don't know when he first started. The Mexican kid. He gets the Blue Beetle. And now it's all... Now it's has alien origins. And, you know, it's a space tech. And, or alien tech, you know. And it's able to do all these technical crap. And it just... They completely changed it. And I, I, I really don't care for the new one. Because it's been done before. I personally like the older version. But anyways, the movie is pretty self-explanatory. He gets the, you know, the scarab, and then it attaches itself to him. Uh, he doesn't know how to use it, but apparently it has its own little mind or some shit, and it's female, by the way. And it kind of takes control of them uh, until cl closer to the end of the movie where they pair up. Now, at first, he won't kill anybody. Uh, the Mexican kid, he just flat out refuses to kill anybody. He keeps telling the suit, you know, you can't kill anybody. And then later on, when their supposed minds uh, link up and... It becomes part of its host, which is the Mexican kid. All of a sudden, 
it's the mach- the the suit that uh, the alien that don't want to kill anybody when the Mexican kid does. So it makes no sense. You'd think it'd be the other way around. Uh, like the suit would be fine with killing because it was trying to kill it at the first. But whatever. Um, there's other things that are completely wrong with this movie. I I absolutely thought it was cringe. Uh, the family, the you know, they're using all the uh, the old tech uh, from. I guess the the daughter is now the Harris of Ted Core's empire or, or you know corporation or whatever. And she she shows them all where the Blue Beetle's hidden lair is and you know shit like that because supposedly Ted Core disappeared during the Infinite Crisis in the comics. And Booster Goat is his best friend, and they, everyone's speculating that, you know, he took him on a time travel adventure, and they got lost, or some shit like that, but anyways, the whole family, like, now knows everything, and then all of a sudden, they're the ones that's helping bust, or, he gets captured by this evil woman, you know, wants to use, uh, the Blue Beetle to make this army of, like, cyber soldiers or whatever uh and he gets captured by her and she's trying to figure out how to download the information from the scarab or whatever to make these super soldiers or whatever the cyber soldiers but anyways um the whole family joins in and tries to help him break him out and they're killing people left and right it's just when he's all like, oh, don't kill, blah, blah, blah. And they're all killing everybody, like hundreds of people, soldiers or whatever. It's just, it's kind of redonkulous. It was ignorant. Uh, and some of the stuff that George Lopez was saying was just super cringe, super racist kind of crap. Woke crap. But anyways, um, this movie sucked. It was terrible absolutely terrible and of course it bombed at the box up nobody really cares about this character for the most part um, he doesn't join the Justice League until after Infinite Crisis in the comics um, but that's the Ted Cord character not this Mexican kid this newer version of Blue Beetle is a woke character so anyways Two thumbs down. I absolutely did not like this movie. It sucked so bad. It was terrible. Anyways, moving on. Uh, let's get on to your B movie reviews. Okay, movie holics. This week is Sci-Fi Week. something that was more you could call it sci-fi but you can call it fantasy too I did a couple of them 
Um, the first one was done 1990, and it made about seven million at the box office. I mean, it was okay. I mean, it did okay, but it wasn't really that great, or, or did that great at the box office. Um, and it's called Almost an Angel, and it stars Paul Hogan and Linda uh, Kozolowski. Hopefully, that's how you pronounce her name. But anyways. Um, basically the pair from Crocodile Dundee. Uh, I'm not even sure, but she may be his wife in real life. I have no idea. It just seems they do movies together quite often. Anyways, uh, Paul Hogan is the guy who did Crocodile Dundee. And in this, uh, he's a con that's being released from jail. Uh, he was electronics alarm experts, you know, where he'd break into banks or, or homes or whatever, you know, and do all the electronics to break in, crack safes, that kind of thing. Um, once he's released from jail, he starts to do the bank thing again. Um, at one point in time where he's getting ready to do another bank heist he, you know he's making plans he sees this kid jump in front, in front of this bus and the bus is going to run this kid over uh, like 10, 11 year old kid so he, he jumps out in the middle of the road and saves the kid's life but he gets hit and knocked out um he wakes up in a hospital. However, before he actually wakes up, he kind of has this dream that he's in heaven. And this nurse and this doctor uh, comes in and talks about this guy that has died in the next bed next to him. And uh, from what they're saying, you know, like he's dead, blah, blah, blah. He thinks he's dead. So he dreams himself talking to God or whatever, and um, the, his God tells him he's on probation, you know, because he gave up his life to save another. So he's getting a second chance uh, to do it right this time. So they're sending him back, and now he's in, he's to become an angel, like he's a uh, half angel, you know, not quite there yet because he's on probation and his job his mission is to help those in need so he wakes up in the hospital he gets out of the hospital and through circumstance you know he uh, you know he tries to figure out where he's supposed to go the first place he goes is to a church he donates almost all the money he stole to the church he takes a little bit of it for himself now the cops are after him. Uh, they don't know who he is. They're trying to find him. Uh, they think they know who he is. They think he's, he is who he's supposed to be, the con man guy or whatever, the con or whatever. Uh, they're going after him. But they don't know where he's at. They're trying to find him. Uh, through circumstance, like I said, he... He sees a bus that says Moses on it, so he thinks that's a sign from God. So he hops on the, the, this truck called, that says Moses on it and rides it all the way to where its delivery is at. While there, he meets a, a guy in a, a wheelchair and he becomes like friends with him. He decides to help him out. Uh, he starts staying with him and his family, his sister and his mother. Um, his sister, uh, which is Linda's character, is a little overprotective of him. So at first she doesn't really care for him, but she starts to start feeling for him. Now they run a like children's uh, 
recreation center. He sticks around to help them with the recreation center. Now they also need money to fix it up and uh, they're trying to get this particular reverend or something uh, that has a lot of money to help her out or, or help them out with the recreation center. He kind of helps, you know, convince the guy kind of through shady means, making him think that God's talking to him or whatever to give uh, the recreation center money. Uh, he does this through some trickery or whatever. Um, and then towards the end of the movie, the guy in the wheelchair, he dies. He passes away. And he basically tells her, well, gotta go. You know, it's like, I'm done. Gotta go. God's telling me to move on. And she's and he's like telling them, you know, he's an angel, you know, he can't be killed and, and stuff like that. And they just think he's crazy, but he's, he's a harmless crazy person because, you know, he reads the Bible every day and blah, blah, blah. So they don't mess with him too much. But towards the end, a bus nearly ran, or a truck nearly runs over him. And instead of killing him, it just goes right through him. And that's pretty much the end of the movie, you know. She just tells him bye, and he says, I'll be back, you know. And that's the end of the movie. Realizes that he really is an angel, you know, that blah, 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 you know. I mean, this whole time, you know, everybody else thought he was crazy. And he truly believed it. He wasn't quite sure, but he was pretty sure. And he definitely was sure at the end. But anyways... It's a good movie. Definitely check it out. It's worth a watch. Uh, it's not super funny, but there are a few funny parts in it. I, I, I give it two thumbs up. I highly recommend it. All right. Moving on to your next one, which was done in 1998, and it made about $55 million worldwide. So it did fairly well uh, for back then. And it's called Small Soldiers. And this stars Gregory Smith and Kristen Dunst uh, when she was still a teenager, but or, uh, she was pretty young. Now this one is basically about some toys that they made, uh, this company makes, and they take uh, like military chips that are kind of like AI chips, like artificial intelligence, and they put them in these uh, toys' heads. You have the commandos, and, you know, like military guys, and then you have what's called the Gorgonites, which are like uh, some creatures from another world or whatever, and they're supposed to be enemies. Well, the chips take that literally, so they're just trying to kill each other. Well, the commandos are trying to kill the Gorgonites. Uh, the AI for the Gorgonites tells them that they should hide all the time and that they're born to lose to them, but whatever. Anyways, uh, this kid, he manages or helps his dad manage a toy store. And one of the shipments, he notices these boxes and he asks the driver, who happens to be buddies with him, asked the driver if he could take a couple, uh, you know, a set of each of the Commandos and the Gorgonites to sell it to make some money because his dad likes the, you know, the, the old classic toys and stuff, you know, instead of the modern toys. So he agrees to allow him to take a couple boxes. So they, uh, but when he does, the commandos break out, trash the store, uh, are trying to find the Gorgonites, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Gorgonites are hiding. Uh, Archer, the main Gorgonite, he goes with the boy, home with the boy, and the boy figures out, hey, you know, he's learning, you know, because he's AI. So anyways, uh, they eventually find the Gorgonites, the other Gorgonites, but not before the Commandos figure out what's going on, where they're at, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Commandos uh, 
they form like uh, this little army of like they're almost like Barbie dolls they're called Wendy's but they're basically Barbie dolls and they tear them up and make them look horrid and make them like a, a part of their group or whatever uh, so they kidnap Kristen Dunst which is almost his girlfriend but they're actually neighbors or whatever but uh, they uh, start attacking them uh, the guys that created the dolls they show up because the boy had left them a message saying hey you know these dolls are nuts you know they're destroying everything they're trying to kill people so they go to there to find out what's going on and they find out that uh, you know that they're learning they're learning uh, just learning uh, like an AI they're learning uh, so it's kind of a surprise to them but they you know before they went to him they figured out you know that what the chips do and they knew they were in trouble so they went to go recover him. but a lot of chaos ensues because the boy and the girl thinks they destroyed the first batch of commandos but uh, one survivor the chip doll or the chip commando the leader of the commandos he finds more uh, commandos at a uh, in a truck at a, a, a another toy store and he takes it and uh, activates all the uh, commandos and they go attacking the family not just the boys family but the girls family too with the two guys from the corporation there and uh, a bunch of chaos ensues and they have to fight all the commandos and then the Gorgonites help finally help them out and says screw it we're gonna fight we're not gonna you know hide and then towards the end you know they save the day and they do what uh, they realize the chip is vulnerable to an EMP so they blow up a couple transformers outside on the pole and uh, you know the EMP bomb all the commandos and destroy them all luckily it didn't take out the Gorgonites apparently the neighbor had uh, the, the girl's father had a dish and it fell on top of the Gorgonites and protected them from the EM EMP now the corporation president he shows up and he makes sure everything gets cleaned up and then he has an idea to, to actually make real soldiers uh, you know toy soldiers that actually kill uh, for some groups so the two guys who created the, the toys in the first place they don't get fired he, they, he wants them working on his military division so they leave boy finds the Gorgonites that they're safe and okay all the commandos are gone and then they take the Gorgonites and give them a boat which his dad had a wood, little wooden boat and they put them on there and they sell off because their primary objective according to the AI chip is to find Gorgon which is where they're from which doesn't exist but they think it might they never know so they take off looking for Gorgon and that's the end of the movie um it's okay movie it's all right it's cheesy I mean it's pretty cheesy uh you know it's more catered to kids or family type thing uh, but it's a pretty decent movie for what it is I give it two thumbs up check it out if you want it's not bad so that's all I have for you this week. Um, if you have any thoughts about what I talked about earlier in the video, please leave your uh, thoughts in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you could think of any underrated or B-rated films you think I may never even heard of or know about, please leave your suggestions down in the comment section down below. 
and I'll get to reviewing them as soon as I can. So until next time, I told you to be told the truth and you've just been told. Thank <laughs> you.